Hey guys, well, I've got a treat for you. Today I'm going to be talking about all the Fast and Furious movies. Now, I have to tell you guys a couple of things. First, I saw these movies in chronological order because I figured it would be better for me to, uh, do that so I don't get any inclination of how Fast and Furious, Fast Five, and Fast Six were to behave. And I already had the uh, main twist that connects Tokyo Drift to, uh... The other movies spoiled for me. Well, kind of. I was spoiled the first half of it. Let me put it to you that way. I will try and talk about how Tokyo Drift fits if you see these in production order, however. And uh, I'm not necessarily going to be describing the plot of these movies too much and how they worked because I think all of you guys know how these movies <laughs> played out and something like that, and I probably won't be rating them because since they all connect with each other so much, I view it as just one big story, even though it does kind of change. More on that later, hopefully. If you feel like I missed anything, comment below. So first of all, The Fast and the Furious. I liked this movie. It had a very good interaction with the cast, a very interesting plot to start it out, and the way that they developed it I thought was very well done. Even though this was made back in 01, I think. What they did with all those car stunts was interesting. I was gritting my teeth while I was watching this movie. I felt... Sorry for cast members in some situations. I laughed my face off many times, and... Yeah, I just thought it was a well-done movie. I was kind of disappointed that we didn't learn too much about the history behind these guys, but... One, I realized that that isn't the main point of this movie. It's, like, just about the culture of racing and just the interaction between them. And I feel like the later movies made up for that enough. Even though we, we only get it from Vin Diesel's character, not so much Paul Walker's character, but I digress. Okay, now moving on to Too Fast and Too Furious. Um, this movie did have a good amount of strengths for, that it, the previous one had. It had the interesting plot. The cast gelled together pretty well. A very well thought out plot. I was laughing many times, but... It just didn't feel as good as the one before. Yeah, I think the best way to describe it is, um, the humor when I laugh. Um, now I'm laughing because I find it funny, but at the same time I found it fairly stupid. Uh, the term I have for that kind of humor is what I like to call Will Ferrell humor, because even though I find Will Ferrell funny, half the time I still want to bury my face in my hand like that because he's just acting so stupid. It's kind of like the other guys were slight spoiler. This is revealed in the trailer for the movie where he's trying to talk Michael Scott's boss of the office from committing suicide. Yeah, please step down so- Oh look, he's flying! Mm -hmm. Still though, I think it's a nice movie, but it's definitely one of the uh, lowest ones in the franchise. I'm with the crown on that. You like it though, hey? No problem with that. Now, uh, Fast and Furious. I wasn't expecting to like this movie because I knew that the critical reception to this one wasn't really that great, even though it did bring back the original cast, which kind of confused me because I was like, why are you not saying that this is as good? Because since it brings everyone back, shouldn't you be liking it? So I viewed it, not expected to like it, and when I was done, I was like, uh, actually, this is my new favorite of the series. I thought that this was a great movie. Why? Because, um, even though it, uh, behaves in some ways like the original, you get the feeling that the tone is a lot more serious, more competitive. I got tense in many more situations. The interaction between Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, and, like, everybody was still great, and the fact that they killed off Michelle Rodriguez's character, that added a lot more depth to it. That was great. Paul Walker's character had matured, him and Vin Diesel were on more even ground, and that was just great. And then, best part of the movie, where Paul Walker was like, Now you owe me a ten-second car, yeah! <laughs> 
I don't get it. I love this one. I don't know. Now going on to uh, Fast Five. Um, I was amazed at how they were actually able to top the one before it in this movie because it did behave a lot like this one where basically Vin Diesel or somebody close to him gets double crossed. He figures out who's responsible, he gets together with a couple of other people, then they plan a, an elaborate operation to take care of the bad guy, then they manage to get a couple of more people on their side along the way. So yeah, it was great. And I also love how The Rock did in this movie, because even though... <laughs> it's I'm about to call him the bad guy, but since Vin Diesel and company are criminals, you know, you can't really say who the bad guy is, because are you going to call the drug lord the bad guy, are you going to call the criminals the bad guy, or are you going to call the cop the bad guy? <laughs> who am I supposed to call the bad guy? <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but... <laughs> I've said all I wanted to. It was just the fourth one on a much better scale, and I loved how they brought back pretty much everybody from the previous movies. That was great. And I especially liked the way that they ended it also, because that gets people sticking around for the next one. Not bad. And now, time to discuss Fast and Furious 6. Um... Now, I did like this movie. It has even more elaborate action scenes. There's a tiny bit more at stake because you gotta figure out how uh, the group is going to, spoiler if you haven't seen this one, help Letty out. And also, it ties the franchise into Tokyo Drift for those who saw Tokyo Drift before this movie, but... I gotta be honest, I didn't care for this one as much as the other two. I thought it was still a good movie, but the sense of, like, desperation, I wasn't really feeling it in this one. Also, I felt there were too many, uh, night sequences where there was a lot of stuff going on because there were times where I had a tough time figuring out who was, like, where, that kind of thing. It could be because the room I saw... The movie and had a lot of light on it, and I'm watching it on my phone, not my TV, but I don't know. It just didn't feel like as much was happening. But it was still very creative, a very good way to continue the franchise. I did laugh. I appreciated the effort that they put into it, and even though I checked this sequence after Tokyo Drift, what they do with the credit sequence involving Han's death, showing a Jason, uh, his face. Jason, uh, Staff. Ham got from the Expendables, or one of them, any way. That was a great way to get people hooked into Fast and Furious 7. Good job. But that's really all I could say on that. Nice movie, but just not as great for me. And then, um, talking about Tokyo. Drift. Now, I wasn't expecting to like this one, especially since it seemed, according to most people that had commented about this movie without including spoilers, that we actually didn't even need to see the movie with uh, Fast and Furious 6 being released, and it's true that uh, we don't, but as I was watching this, I found myself liking it, oddly, because I really liked the... Uh, I think the term is flight that uh, the main character Sean was going through. I felt for him. I felt like the bad guys in this movie, albeit simpler than the previous three that I discussed, it felt like there was a lot more menace to them. And I also liked how they did even more with just the typical racing uh, aspect to this movie, something that... Uh, the free before it didn't really talk about, although uh, there's only so much you can do with this racing idea, and since uh, 4 through 6 did incorporate the adrift element to it, well, somewhat at least, yeah, it makes sense. 
And uh, what else can I say about Tokyo Drift? I felt intense watching various of, of the race sequences, and when Hans ended up getting killed, I did feel sorry for him, although, uh, one, because I actually saw this movie before I saw the Fast 6 post credit sequence, I felt like his death came out of nowhere, and even though I know that this was made before Fast 6, he doesn't really seem to be acting like he should be after the events in Fast 6. But, hey... You can't totally be perfect, and, uh... It's just what the franchise set out to do. And they did make his character more important because of that post credit sequence, because I gotta be honest here, um... Given the, uh, fact that Hans is the main thing that connects, uh, 4, 5, and 6 to Tokyo Drift, you would think he'd have some more importance, but... I don't know, uh, I just didn't really feel like there was really much to his character. It could be that I'm just not feeling for him as much as the others, I don't know, just... There just didn't really seem to be too much uh, to him, along with, like, a Giselle, because even though I know that she meant uh, a lot in what happens to Han in the end, along with what happened in Fast and Furious, but... I think you guys kind of get the idea. Nice characters, and they did gel with everybody, but... It was tough, and like, I actually gotta be honest with you guys, I forgot Giselle's name, to be honest, okay? Usually that's not a good sign, although I did uh, have a couple weeks break when I watched these movies, because I actually watched these in twos. I saw these two the same day, I saw these two within a day of each other, and then I saw this and Fast 6 within a day of each other. With a couple of weeks in between. Okay, so uh, now, um, had I watched this in production order, how would I feel about this? Um, I actually feel like the movie fits better that way, to be honest, because... These two discussed racing uh, a lot more than uh, these two did, where it turned into just heist after heist. Not that I'm complaining about that, I don't totally mind it that much. So, it just makes sense for this to be there, because they're talking about upping the race factor a little bit more. And as I stated, 4, 5, and 6 did have some of the drift bits incorporated into it, even though I can't visualize all of the moves in my mind very well. So, <laughs> I gotta be honest, I actually think, even though I don't know why I'm saying this at the end of the video, that production order is the way to go with these movies, because you're actually not totally going to be spoiled that much, except... You may... well, actually, you should be able to realize that the group succeeds in the heists, because if they didn't succeed, how do they make a sequel? Silly me! Yeah. Okay. So now I feel like the best thing to do is to now talk about how I feel about the upcoming Fast and Furious 7 movie. Um... I'm really hoping that this movie does well because of several reasons. One, now that the franchise has, um... Bridge the gap, you gotta step it up a big notch because of that. And also, if you're promising Jason uh, Strafham to be in this movie as the bad guy, you really gotta make it good if you're gonna have that many big names in there. But at the same time, uh, I'm on the edge because, um, one, I don't really see how the franchise can continue at this point, really, because since um, Vin Diesel and company have now gotten the criminal records completely wiped, after you do this one more revenge thing, there's not going to really be that much you're going to be able to do, and uh, I gotta confess, for most of the franchise, up until Fast 6, I actually felt like the franchise was more about Paul Walker's character and Vin Diesel just having to be there for the ride, okay? And, uh, th thankfully, they're actually not going to be killing Paul Walker's character off. They're going to retire his character, which does make sense, because 
if his son is going to be a couple of years old, you know, it does help with that, sure. But it's such a bummer that uh, he died, because this franchise was in a great place to continue, you know, and with him gone, that's a lot of the energy right there, even though I think with the addition of, um... The Rock and all the black guys, sorry to use the term like that. The franchise could theoretically continue, but I'm just on the edge about that. But I still expect it to be one heck of a fun time, definitely one of the better ones of the franchise, and yeah, I'm hoping. Okay, so now how would I rank these movies? Um, hmm. This is a little bit impromptu here, okay? I think I'm gonna go with, uh, best, second best, um, third of best, then I'm gonna put Fast 6, then I'm going to put this. I did like it, but I feel like, you know, you have to put the original cast above this movie, and this one being my least favorite. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I realized that this wasn't uh, as well thought out, but like I said, I can't really discuss the plots too much, so I can really only discuss how each movie was for me, and since I'm talking about a seven-movie franchise here, along with a couple of other random plot points, I think accomplishing that in just over a quarter of an hour really isn't that bad. See ya!